You might be somebody that on the daily thinks, well, what do I eat? What do I not eat? When should I eat? How much should I eat? Well, if I eat this now, what should I eat later? And well, I'm not supposed to eat that, so what should I eat instead? Well, if this is you, have no fear. You are not alone. And in fact, you're in the exact right spot today to hear how you can stop the runaround going on in your head. My name is Rayan Porte, and I am a faith-based health coach. In last week's video, we talked all about the very first step to overcome your food and fitness struggles using the gospel, and that was to think about what we think about. So we prayed the prayer, search me, oh God, know my heart, test me, and know my anxious thoughts. Basically, we were praying, dear God, show me what I think about. Show me what thoughts are of you and what thoughts are coming from the devil. Basically, this was an exercise in exposing the devil and not just the thoughts that he's telling us, but what will, what false beliefs he's trying to make us believe based off of those thoughts and how he's deceiving us and what lies he's telling us. So in that exercise, we talked all about ways that the devil might be talking to us, whether that's hyper controlling our food, overindulging, thoughts about, well basically thoughts from the devil about priding us for getting our workout in or shaming us if we didn't, thoughts that are pointing us towards worshiping our body or hating our body, thoughts that are about self, self-worth self and making ourselves our God, or thoughts about worthlessness, and even thoughts that are coming from fear or thoughts of apathy, failure, inadequacy, doubt, disappointment. We basically said, all of that, we are shining a light on all of our thoughts to say those are the devil. Well, be encouraged because in this video today, we're going to talk all about how to experience these thoughts, but not act on them. And then in future videos, we're going to talk about how to completely replace those lies with the truth that's founded in God's word. Now on to today's video. What do we do with these thoughts from the devil? Well, we can do two things that will help us experience the thoughts, but not act on them. The first is taking our thoughts captive and then claiming the victory. Taking our thoughts captive. What does this mean? Well, let's read the passage where the Bible talks about this. In 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians, it says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So what was going on here is Paul was um, talking to the Corinthian church, basically warning them, if false teachers come up, we need to test what they're saying against the knowledge of Christ. And we need to make, make sure that they're not infiltrating and polluting our thoughts, but instead we need to make sure our thoughts are staying obedient to Christ. Well, how does this apply to our situation in our food and fitness struggles? It actually is spot on and directly applies. So let's talk about what that word means, captive. It basically means to be imprisoned or confined. And if you think about a prisoner, what would we do? We would send them to prison away from the rest of society. And that's how we can start to think about our thoughts that are coming from the devil, is we can put them away in a different, in a different part of our mind because we know that they are not coming from us. And we can basically say, okay, we, we're deciding today to separate our thoughts, um, our thoughts that are coming from the devil from all the rest of our thoughts that we know are from him. So let me just give you a picture of what it was like before I knew to do this and after. So before I took my thoughts captive, I basically felt like they were a part of me. I didn't realize that there was even a difference between a thought and an action because I felt like it was all one in the same. And I had been thinking thoughts from the devil for years. And so they were definitely rooted deep down in where I truly believed a lot of a lot of these things. And it was through the exercise we did last week where I started to see, oh wait, these are actually lies and they're not from me, they're from the devil. So after I separated, um, after I took my thoughts captive and separated from them, I was then able to recognize them as a product of my old flesh and not of the new creation that God has made me to be. And I was able to put 
space in between the thought and my response to the thought and thus the action. I could choose what to do with the thought because it, I was separate from it. And so one thing that helped me in this exercise is thinking about the difference between awareness and attention. I could be aware that the thought was there, but because it was separate and not a part of me, I didn't need to bring attention to it. And probably the biggest thing that helped me do this is that I stopped attaching a meaning to the thought because I could recognize it for what it was. After I took my thoughts from the devil captive, the second thing I did is that I claimed victory over them. So what does this mean? Well, when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he defeated the devil. So now today we have inside of us the Holy Spirit and that's the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. So it says in 1 John, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So the Holy Spirit in us is greater than the devil because of the work that Jesus did on the cross. And so, yes, while the devil is trying to do his work here on earth, we just need to state what has already happened. We just need to claim the victory that's already been won. So let me give a little bit of color on how this played out for me before I claimed the victory and then after. So there were two different ways, or there are two different types of thoughts that the devil would send me in my food and fitness struggles. So the first were very loud messages egging me on to do something. And more often than not, I panicked when these thoughts came. So a good example would be, you know, if I was maybe out with friends and I had eaten two cookies, the devil clearly said, oh, shame on you. Not supposed to do that. Just eat, go home and eat all everything else that you have. And who cares? You're just going to start again tomorrow. Well, I would get so angry when these thoughts would come. I would get so emotional about them and I tried to fight them in different ways. One, I would white knuckle it. Like he would say yes, I would say no. He would say yes, I would say no. It never ended well. Then I would negotiate. I would say, well, the thought's gonna go away. Maybe if I just eat one more cookie, but not all of them. Nope, the thoughts were still there nagging me. Thirdly, I would try to distract myself. I would walk away from the food or I would try to do something else, but the thoughts still persisted nagging me. And in these times, I almost felt like I was already defeated or that the thought was the defeat. Like I felt like I was already defeated before I even did anything. And I wasn't recognizing that I didn't even need to engage in the battle, if that makes sense. The question was always before me, will I give in? I didn't recognize that the fight had already been won. I didn't even need to ask that question at all because of the power that is is in me through the Holy Spirit. The second type of um, message that the devil would send me um, was a much softer and sneakier message. And sometimes these would pop up if something had happened in my day. Say for example, something happened at work and the devil started to slip in thoughts of failure or inadequacy, but I didn't recognize that that's what was going on. And so then later on that day, I would find myself halfway through a box of cookies thinking, how did I get here? And in that situation, I was taken out, the devil had taken me out before I even knew that there was a battle, right? So whereas one, the first situation was very much back and forth battle, this battle was, oh, I'm on the ground and I didn't even know that what was going on, that I was in a battle. So after I knew to claim the victory, it completely changed how I experienced these thoughts from the devil. And here's a couple reasons why. One, I started to expect the thoughts to come and to know to look for them. So in the Bible, it says, be, uh, be alert, be of sober mind, expect the devil. He's prowling around like a lion. And in expecting them to come, these thoughts to come, I stopped fearing them because I knew I had won. I didn't have to have this constant 
nagging in my head of, am I going to be strong enough to wither or to withhold the temptation? I already knew that Christ is going to give me the power to um, resist the devil. The second thing I realized is that the thought in and of itself is not a sin. Even Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Satan came. He fought the devil with the word of God and Satan fled. And so that tells me right there that when the thought comes, I can rest in the assurance that thought in and of itself, the temptation is not a sin. Thirdly, I recognized that the thoughts didn't have power to make me angry. So I didn't need to emotionally re emotionally react because I knew that I already had the victory over the thought. And so there was no need for me to panic, to get angry. I mean, look at Jesus. That wasn't how he responded in the wilderness. He didn't get angry. He wasn't scared. He re recited the word of God and then the devil he fled. And that was because Jesus knew, he already knew the end. He already knew the ending. So when we know the ending, we don't need to get all worked up about it. The fourth thing is I realized that the thought didn't have the power to physically make me do anything. So the thought in and of itself couldn't, couldn't come here and make me pick up my arm in my hand and do anything. So our prefrontal cortex controls, that's the part of our brain that controls how we move our arms and move our, it's, that houses control of our limbs. And so that's not the part of the brain that these, that the devil is sending us these thoughts in. And so because of that, I knew that the devil, no matter what he would say to me, didn't have any power to physically force me to do anything. The fifth thing is that I realized that I didn't have to follow the thoughts down the bunny trail. Basically, I didn't have to give the thoughts a second thought. And this came once I started to recognize the thoughts because I immediately could, I knew it, I could recognize it and so then I didn't have to give it a second thought. But how often back in my former days did I nurture the thought not knowing I was nurturing a thought from the devil? And look at Eve. She said in the Garden of Eden, in the Garden of Eden, did God really say that? And so that's how the devil works is when you're deceived, you because you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. But when once you know what's going on, it's that much easier not to follow the bunny trail. And so the very last thing is kind of a culmination of all the previous things is I started to recognize the devil more clearly as time passed. So the more that I was able to do these things, the clearer I could see how the devil was scheming and how, like what he would say to me, how he would try to get in there. Um, I would start to, start to recognize um, just his methods. And that led me to just, again, in the day to day, um, be able to claim the victory more frequently from that point on in, in my struggle as I was coming out of it. All of that to say that by doing these two things, it helped me experience those messages and thoughts from the devil in a totally different way and such that I didn't end up acting on whatever the devil was trying to get me to do. I hope that for you, this video has been an encouragement so that you as well in this next week can completely experience these thoughts from the devil in a totally different way too. Feel free to send me any stories or, or wins that you have over the next week. I would love to hear about them. Also, if you just need help applying these two things to your personal situation, I would love to chat with you about that too. In the future videos, we are going to be talking all about what does the Bible mean when it says to put on our armor and how do we go about replacing these lies from the devil with the truth that's founded in God's word. Truth about who God is, who we are and our identity, what the right perspective of food is and what his perspective of our body can be. It's going to be great stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I will see you next week.